The 11.20 to 11.35 slot is filled with Coach Mark Pope. We're going to ask him to make a statement on his team about being here in Omaha. And then we'll go to questions. Mark, please. Um, we're grateful that everybody's here. The hospitality has been unbelievable. And uh, be here in this great city of Omaha, uh, home of so many worldwide and national figures, actually. And so team's excited to be here. Had a good practice this morning. Uh, are um, really excited about tomorrow. Uh, playing against a great, nothing short of a great Duquesne team. And um, can't wait to get going. Start here on the left-hand side. Thank you. Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Mark, uh, uh, with, uh, with Ali fasting, coming out of the Big, Big 12 tournament, did you guys, is there any like adjustments being made? Did he learn something from that uh, as far as making sure his body's right uh, for, for this, that, that maybe he was able to get out of the Big 12? Yeah, um, I think we're getting more comfortable with the schedule, more comfortable with the diet, more comfortable with kind of the first thing he eats in the evening and kind of how he rations it out. And I think in general, uh, you know, this is his first time where he's been in competition during Ramadan. And so I think he's just become way more comfortable with it. And um, so he's, uh, you know, he's had, he's, he's had a little bit more juice every day. Uh, he's adjusting to it and, and uh, I'm super proud of him. Like he's an incredible example of, of faith and devotion and, and, uh, and, and he's, 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 he's feeling better every single day. On the aisle. Matt Stevens, Illini guys. Mark, um, now that you're beyond the 18-game slate of, of a Big 12 schedule as you as you made your transition from the West Coast Conference, how would you describe that? And, and take me back to what you thought was most important for you and your staff to get you guys prepared for something like that. Um, it, I mean, before we jumped into the Big 12, I, I always used to say it was terrifying, just the prospect of it. And, and after the 18 games, I totally concur with that assessment. It's terrifying. Uh, but it's also awesome. Um, it, it's just um, as a competitor, it's it's what you dream about is the opportunity to play against uh, great, great teams every single night. And uh, listen, there's a lot of great teams around the country in all different conferences at all different levels. It just so happens the Big 12 just has a bunch of them stuffed together in the same collection where you see them every single night. Um, I'm really proud of my staff. Uh, those guys uh, have been at it for the last two years um, trying to prepare, uh, figure out how we could um, carve out uh, just our own little um, niche in that league and find a way to survive. And um, we'll continue to grow in that process, but I'm really proud of, of what, what the staff and certainly our players were able to accomplish this year in our first year and, and hope to continue to grow in that way. Right here in front, and then we'll go on the aisle here. Gina, thank you. Mitch Harper, KSL Sports in Salt Lake. Mark, uh, how would you assess the, the preparation readiness of the team entering this moment that they've been chasing for years? Yeah, I, I feel we feel good. Um, you know, we haven't changed a lot. Uh, you know, we, we really don't believe in reinventing the wheel uh, rolling the tournament because this is what we've been preparing for all season long. Um, I think our guys are loose. I think they're uh, full of energy. Certainly, they're going to feel uh, all of the juice that comes with playing in this tournament. Um, but I think they, they're pretty par prepared to deal with those emotions. And, and um, we're, I think we're just uh, so eager to kind of race out and kind of jump in the fray of this tournament and see what we can do. Um, I, I feel like our guys are in a good spot. Mark Tim Benz from Duquesne Radio, also from Trib Live in Pittsburgh. Uh, regarding Clark and Day Day Grant on the perimeter, um, obviously the offense largely goes through them. Uh, from a defensive standpoint for you guys, how do you best account for those two? And then in terms of uh, the inside game that they also add, uh, what do you look for for them? Because Dan Brock, Coach Dan Brock has said they are an, inside, an outside in team, which is not what he usually has. Yeah. Um... You know, those two guards, I have no idea how to slow them down, actually. So we'll, we'll just see, see if we can do our best. Um, they're explosive. They score at all three levels. Uh, they make plays for their teammates um, in, in huge ways. Uh, you know, um, they can make plays off the bounce. They can make plays off the catch. Uh, they can make plays cutting, um, you, know, uh, you know, against um, – 
uh, against Dayton, for example, um, Clark uh, just put on a clinic the last six minutes in terms of uh, the ways he was able to attack from the top of the key. Uh, he was able to attack and get downhill and score on his own, able to attack, get downhill, uh, suck in the dunker spot and earn his teammate a layup, uh, get in the lane, make a second move and kick it out for three, uh, made a step back three in that space. He's kind of sh in, 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 in four and a half minutes, kind of showed the whole collection of what you would ask from a point guard and was probably better on the defensive end in that game than he was on the offensive end. And so, they, you know, they have a really, really special backcourt. Both those kids are really special. But um, maybe even more of a defining feature of the team to us is their physicality uh, at every possession. Um, they, they challenge every single pass, every single catch, every single bounce. Um, they move bodies. Uh, you know, they're, they're relentless. They're in a stance for, for 30 seconds, every single defensive possession, all five guys. Um, so, so as, as good as those guards are, you know, what coach has done in terms of getting his team to buy into the physicality and the consistency of, of effort and, and kind of ball hawkishness DNA of that team is pretty special. It's a, good, it's a, it's a terrific team. Jay Drew from the Deseret News in Salt Lake City. Mark, uh, a lot of people were talking about the clash of styles. How do you think you've fared against kind of these grinding, slow down teams uh, throughout the course of the season? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to characterize teams because uh, Duquesne will get out and run. When they have opportunities off steals, off misses, off opportunities, they get out and run as good as anybody in the country. You know, Clark getting to the rim kind of on his own. Uh, you, you have so many clips of him dribbling through a whole team to get to the rim. And, and and day day is is uh, you know most dangerous actually maybe as a is a catch and shoot uh, three guy in transition, so they'll push the pace a lot. Um, the, I think the reason maybe they sometimes the game feels a little slower is because they're so relentless on the defensive end. They're so physical. They're so scrappy. They're so dialed in. Um, uh, and, and, and hopefully we've seen some teams that play like that. We've played to, against some great defensive teams. Um, we certainly have some uh, that we've played against in our league and in our non-conference. Um, but, but they definitely pose a, a challenge for us. And, and certainly the pace of the game is going to be something that's going to – we're going to have to deal with the pace of the game. Um, not just – you know, pace of the game is not just running up and down across half court. Pace of the game is also – you know, in the half court against a really, really physical defense that's going to kind of hold and scratch and claw and try and slow down cuts. It's being physical enough to actually finish your cut and get through cuts and not be slowed down and not take the easy way out on a cut. And, and um, so the pace of the game is still going to be a massive point of emphasis, even if that doesn't mean we're flying over half, you know, half court you know, every 15 seconds. We're going to back, and then we have two questions up here, Gina. Go. Uh, Greg Grubel, BYU Sports Network. First up, I do count you among the nationwide and worldwide luminaries from Omaha. There just we go. So you know. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, uh, if you, you guys looked at the list, we all know the list, right? You, you and Warren Buffett primarily, and then yeah, you. I mean, Warren Buffett, The Godfather, <laughs> Malcolm X, Bob Gibson. I mean, the list of Omaha, like, I'm telling you. Fred Hoiberg. Yes, the mayor. Fred Hoiberg. Okay. Uh, you had a tournament-worthy team that didn't get to play in 2020. Then you had a COVID version in, in 2021. How maybe refreshing or invigorating is it to be in a kind of fully loaded uh, March Madness experience with your team? Yeah, we're, we're really grateful um, to, to, to kind of for these guys to get a feel. I have two players on this team that were in our in our COVID year NCAA uh, tournament team. And, um, you know, if you guys remember, it seems like it was a decade ago, but uh, going to India and being in that hotel and being tested – you know, 17 times a day for a week before we could even get on a practice floor was just a, a it was a different experience that was necessary. And we're so grateful uh, for all the precaution that was taken and, and uh, for, for the opportunity to actually go compete. Uh, but I'm happy for those guys that they get to come feel this because this is, this, is, this is the way it's supposed to be. You know, one of the beautiful things about March Madness is sharing it with, you know, we got to the hotel last night and uh, there's a big contingent of BYU faithful from uh, the state of Nebraska and, and, and visiting states that was gathered at the hotel. And, and all of that is part of, you know, it's a part of what makes uh, March Madness great. And so I'm, I'm glad the guys get to enjoy that. Left-hand side, Mark. Ray Goss, Duquesne Radio. Coach in this day and age when betting on games is talked about just widespread. I saw one report and everyone says you're the overwhelming favorite. 
chance you're going to win. How do you handle that with your players? Well, we were also picked 13th in the Big 12. And so sometimes the people that are the smartest aren't just, just aren't that smart, right? And so that's why these games are really brilliant. Um, um, uh, you know, because you get a chance to step out on the court and you, get, you just drop your heart and soul and everything you have on the court. And that's where magical things happen. And so, um, you know, I don't think Duquesne spends any time listening to prognosticators because clearly they don't. They're a great team. They just won their tournament from a sixth seed. And uh, certainly our guys have, have uh, been fueled by, um, um, you know, maybe outside voices questioning what they could do or what they could become. And I think that's the beauty of athletics, right, is because we get to get on the floor and settle it. And that's why all of us that are going to jump into this arena tomorrow, um, not just us in Duquesne, but everybody else, uh, loves this, this opportunity to go prove that we're something that people don't think we can do. And so um, I think it's awesome for fans. I, I love I love all the media coverage. I love all of the the you know the excitement about the games and, and all the prognostications. Um, but we live a little bit of a different life in the arena and, and, and we just get to go um, just get, get to go fight it out and see see, see what really is going to happen. We're under three minutes to go. We have a question here. We're going to go to this side, then we'll see. Go. Mark, uh, Brady Oldman's helping out with the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, just following up on something about Ollie, um, how are your feelings on how the NCAA handled it? Like, would you have rather have had a night game as opposed to an early game with him, with his diet and uh, Ramadan regimen? Yeah, I, I um, you know, we're, we're a pretty faithful organization. And so, um, you know, I think the NCAA, I, you know, I wouldn't expect them to kind of address this issue for us at all. Um, which is fine. I think part of the built-in part of faith is um, that you kind of press forward um, um, with your acts of devotion, and you. It's inherent in that 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 um, you have faith that God's will is going to be done, and and so. Um, I don't think Ollie's asking for any handouts. I don't think any of our players kind of in their faith walk are asking for any accommodations or handouts. I, I think that kind of defies the point of it is, um, is um, you, you know, the, one of the beautiful things about acts of devotion, which all of our guys on our team are incredibly familiar with, is, is that um, you kind of put your offering uh, on the altar, so to speak, the figure of altar, and then, and then you, you trust that... Um, that God's, you know, will is going to be done, and that's pretty special. I think Ollie definitely lives in that space, and and um, he's a believer. You know, we've said this a lot. We're, we're a team full of believers, and and um, and so we're not, you know, not necessarily looking for for unique accommodations. Final question, right here on the right. Uh, Sean Mark from Kansas on Salt Lake, Coach. I, I don't really know how to transition away from that, but I did want to ask you about your point guard, Dallin. Yeah. Uh, I, I tried to pull up some numbers to look smart here, and I'm surprised that he's not playing 36 or 37 minutes a yeah. night. Just how has he performed down the stretch of the yeah. season for you, especially when it, it feels like he doesn't come off the court so much? Yeah, you know, um, Dallin is, is uh, you know, like so many of our guys, has put together a really special season, and it hasn't been uh, – you know, it hasn't been perfect, thank goodness, because that would be so boring. But um, he, he has a unique ability to raise up in crucial key moments and, and settle our team and make big plays. Um, what he's done in terms of a ball control point guard uh, facing what he's f faced all season long, um, you know, knowing that he's such a key guy to our roster with teams uh, trying to attack him has been extraordinary. And for him to do it as a sophomore, um, you know, is still a very, very young player. Uh, it, it really is incredible to watch him and our other players grow, um, even from the beginning of the season, the, the growth you've seen, and certainly from last year, the growth we've been able to see. And, and Dallin is certainly on that train, too. He's, been, he's had a terrific year, and he's really hungry to find some way to you know, put together a great performance tomorrow and, and try and keep, keep playing this game. Thank you, Mark. Best of luck tomorrow. Appreciate you guys.